Tonight's episode is brought to you by the Be Real Podcast Network. For more episodes like this, go to brelnetwork.com. Enjoy the show. And welcome back to episode two of 2018 for distraction. We are still going two weeks in a row. Scott, how are we doing today? Good. So is that how we're going to do things? We're just going to start a, it's a new year. It's a new us. That's the idea. That's the idea. I mean, I mean, that, isn't that what everybody does? Like, did you have any new year's resolu- resolutions that you were like, I'm going to, you know, do this or I'm going to change this about myself or anything like that. Did you have anything like that? Well, see, I thought about it. I was, uh, I was debating it hardcore, but then I, I said to Kristen, my wife, I'm like, hey, you want to do a New Year's rev- resolution with me? And she looked me square in the face, straight in the eye, and goes, no. <laughs> and I said, well, if you're not going to do it with me, I'm not going to be able to like keep it. you know. So I didn't do one. Because that, fuck that shit anyway. Yeah. What I about think, you? No, I didn't. Okay. I didn't do it. I, I think we've hit an age where resolutions are like, look, we're either going to change this about ourselves or we're not going to do it. This new year bullshit doesn't mean anything. Like a lot of people have these new re- new year resolutions where it's like I'm gonna go to the gym a lot more. I'm gonna you know eat healthier, or I'm gonna do this about myself. I'm gonna you know do that about myself. I'm gonna try to improve. And it's like if you can't do it any other time of the year, then January first doesn't make any difference because you're not gonna stick with it. So yeah, uh, in my 2018, I-, I talked about this last week on the show. My 2018 <coughs> has been absolute shit, dude. It's been shit, and it hasn't gotten any better yet. So, fuck 2018. I don't give a shit about it. It needs to get better. It needs to get better <coughs> quick. Um, well, it's only month one, so. Yeah. Yeah, month one. It just, it just, yeah, it needs to get better quick. I mean, this is, this is a first world problem, but I also found out some other bad news since we talked last time. More 2018 bad news. I... We are not going on a Florida vacation, Adam. I'm not going to go to Disney this year, this calendar year. I'm not going to go to the beach this year. Just it's not in the cards for us. Our our financial status right now is, you know, it's that's just, uh that that's unfortunate. It is unfortunate, and I see you smirking there, like, well, I'm fucking never taking vacation, so fuck you, Scott. I mean, I mean, well, you it, know what? It's like no difference for me. I mean, well, you, you know, know what? It's important to me. It's my one thing. So there, there's people out there who need like heroin. There's other people out there who need can, who what? need Jesus. Listen, vacation is my heroin. Okay, it is. It's my. It's there's it's, people out there that need heroin. There's people out there that need heroin. There's other I don't think anybody that needs heroin. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't need heroin. I'm not going to judge people. I just know there's people out there who fucking they act like they need it. I I don't I don't. Okay. There's, out, there's people out there who need Jesus. How about that? I don't think any nobody needs Jesus. I'm telling you, there's people that do. <laughs> you go up to some crazy hardcore holy roller and you look them in the face and you say, "You don't need Jesus." They're about they they crucify you right there. The only thing you need is air, water, and food. That's really all you need. Everything else, agree, everything man. else is a luxury, pretty much. And this is a man I indulge in luxury. I love luxury. I'm just saying we don't need. The only thing we need you do indulge yourself. Yeah. you do. I do. I like you to live to, big. I. You like you love the finer things. I, I wouldn't say I live big, but I do indulge. You're a man of champagne taste, and I respect that about you. Yes. I respect the hell out of that. <laughs> but no, we only need, technically, if we're talking pure biological, we only need food, water, and sleep. But what's the point, then? That's my... That's, that's What's the point? That's the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What's the point of life? If, like, you can't, if you can't do things you like... If you can't have fun, if you can't enjoy it, then why go around the sun a couple of times? You know, it's no point. Exactly. That's. It, it's, do you think? Do you think cavemen indulge? No, it was all about survival with them. Cavemen. Do you think? Do you think they indulged? They get, cavemen get a real bad rap, don't they? I'm just saying, like everybody's well, always like, like, like the, I'm not some fucking caveman. Well, because it's like the earliest point of humanity when humanity was probably at its 
debatable lowest, I guess is what you would say. That's debatable whether that's true or not. I mean, yeah, in today's day and age, so, it's kind of debatable. But I mean, they were just doing, they were doing them. I mean, you can't, don't hate the player, hate the game. So I've, so I'm talking, uh, no, school story, school story Here time. Here we go. School time. story time. We need to get some, some Adam school story theme music happening here. Semester number two, ladies and gentlemen. I'm taking a programming class. I'm taking my elementary French two because the school requires a language. And I am taking my class that will count for my theology, which is Introduction to Political Philosophy. Ooh, that's dangerous. That's dangerous in today's day and age. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's my mentality or if it's the class itself, but I'm not enjoying it so far. Oh, really? Yeah. Because we've only had two classes, so, you know, I'll give it a couple weeks, you know, see if, you know, things break up. But it seems like the teacher, he wants to have discussions, but nobody will engage with him. But he's not, like, asking the kind of questions where it's like, we want to engage in those kind of discussions. Like, we were learning about Athens and democracy, and, you know, obviously Athens is, like, the originators of the first democracy, and we were talking about all like these kind of controversial issues and that, that would happen with Athens. And he would like end each like individual topic with, does anybody have any questions about this or anything like that? Or like, does anybody feel anything strongly about this? Nobody raised their hand and says anything because it's like, no, you explained it. I understand it. Like moving on. And I don't know if maybe he's just not asking the right questions, but it seems like, if you take a philosophy class, don't you think there's going to be a lot of discussion in the class? It's not just some guy standing up there teaching. It should be like a back and forth with the students and the teacher and everybody having a big discussion about it and everything. Isn't that what you think of when you have a philosophy class? Um, I think that's part of it. It's not all of it. But see, here's another thing, Adam. In the past, we've talked philosophy, and you always happen to shit all over philosophy. And we have a friend... She was a philosophy major, and there was a whole thing. I'm not going to get into it. There was, let's just leave it at that there was a thing. Yes. There was a thing. And I have a very low respect for philosophy. There, okay, it's out there. It's out there. That's fine. It's not that- because I hate philosophy. I actually enjoy philosophy. I have a low respect for it because most philosophy to me seems like it's the same old thing where it's like here's a controversial topic let's have a discussion about it it's like we do that shit every day like this is everyday speak like you and me how often do we have controversial topics on this fucking show that's kind of why we're here exactly like we do this shit every day like but like and i i think philosophy likes to be up its own ass by saying it's so important but it's like we do it every day so like should it really be up its own ass I guess. And then at the same time, I have a low respect for philosophy because what can you do with a philosophy degree besides teach? It's almost a wasted major. Unless you plan on being a teacher, it's a wasted major. Like there's one person in my class who is a, he had us write down on note cards, our name, our, the year we're in, sophomore, freshman, junior, senior, whatever. What year are you in? I'm a sophomore, technically. So, um, he also had us write down, you know, what town we're from. And there was one other thing. I don't know. Some minor bullshit. bank account number? Yeah, sure. Our pin pin number. Um, But no, he had us write down and then we would, you know, introduce ourselves. Like, hey, I'm blah, blah, and this year and I'm a whatever year. The first day of class. That happens in every fucking class ever. Yeah. The worst. The fucking worst. So, obviously, computer science major, moi. Mm -hmm. Um, There was one philosophy major in the entire class. And she was a she was a double major, philosophy and French. The two most worthless things you can major in because all you can do with that is be a teacher. Please say she was a freshman. She might have been a freshman. She might have been a freshman. Yeah. I remember hearing that. I'm like... You're either going to change your major or you're not getting a job. I'm sorry. (laughs) Like the only job you can hope to get is like a translator or some shit like that in like some for some government official or whatever. But even then, like the way technology is today, 
translators are going to lose their jobs too because, you know. Because we need so many fucking French translators <laughs> yeah. too. But we also have like translation apps now. It's like, who needs them? I'm like, you're, you're, you're going to be a teacher or you're going to change your major or you're going to waste a lot of fucking money. So, but yeah, there was only one. It's granted, it's a one. I, I think I should have taken a 200 class because I might have more engagement because it seems like everybody's just kind of taking this class. They're like, oh, I need to take a class like this. And, you know, I'm just trying to get through it. But I'm like, I was kind of interested where it's like, I want to have some controversial discussions. Like, I want to I want to get involved and do some stuff. But, like, this 100 class is a bunch of just fuckheads that don't want to do anything. So Let's make it fun. Okay. Here's what I want you to do. You have a homework assignment. I want you... To smuggle a flask in, right? <laughs> Why don't you smuggle some some way to drink alcohol? And every time the word Trump is uttered in class. Oh, he brings you <laughs> okay. a few times. Hit it. hit it, dude. Hit it. Whatever the word the word Trump is uttered, I want you to take a shot of the flask. Dude, by the end of the semester, you're gonna need some new organs. <laughs> like like that, like that would make you it could, fun. That would make it interesting. Make it interesting. What's, and no what's cheating, funny about motherfucker. You, what's funny about you bringing that up is that every now and then he'll bring up Trump. He'll be like, oh, you know, you know, this is what philosophy is about, stuff, and you know, talking about some some stuff our president says or Trump brings up this or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, like last class, he must have brought him up like five times. There's not, five shots. Not even to like. <laughs> Just, just like in passing, not even like bring up a topic of conversation. So I'm like, all right. Does he bring him up in an admirable <laughs> way, or does he no. bring him up in like a he fucking sucks like the rest of us? Think. It's almost, it's almost passive because he doesn't seem to give one opinion one way or the other. It's just he knows it's a controversial topic, so he'll bring him up and say something like, not even really a thing specific, but it's like you know. A lot of times in our class, you know, you know, Trump will say this and we'll have a conversation about it or whatever. Like, it's almost impassive. So my experience with college is I'd have to say. Between 80 and 90 percent of the profs were pretty progressive. But there was that. That 10 percent, that maybe 15 percent. And believe me, they were crazy wacko right wingers. And they knew they were in the minority being in a university or a college. And they knew they were the black sheep. And they, they, they wore that as a badge of honor. I had one, an, uh, macro, micro, econ- one of my economy classes. I forget which one now. And he was a big time right winger. And he wasted no opportunity to bring up politics. And this is back, Jesus, not to date myself, but. It was pre-08. It was like Bush was president. Jesus. Yeah, I'm old. So he would talk about Bush a lot in a way that the class and the rest of the faculty probably disagreed with strongly. But he was he was a minority there. So I guess I'm curious if you're a professor for this political well, here's philosophy, a- does he come off liberal? Does well, here's he come the thing. off conservative? He's a philosophy teacher, Scott. Right. So he's a liberal. Well, not necessarily. Yeah, he's, he's a philosophy teacher. Okay. He's a philosophy teacher. I, I he's figured a liberal. that. I figured that, but I needed to make sure. He's a liberal. I f- he's, okay. a, he's a philosophy teacher. He is a liberal. The individual that in question that we were talking about, we know this person is a liberal, too. Uh, our, our friend. Yes, our friend. Yes. Was the philosophy major. Yes. 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 We, we, yes. Philosophy <laughs> equals liberal. Is, I can't imagine a conservative philosopher. Is he a... Young man? Is it, a, is it a man, Joe? You said... He's a guy. A guy. Younger? Middle-aged? Older? Not really, like, middle-aged. It's like middle-aged, maybe maybe in his, like, 50s. Okay. So, he's he's not he's not young, but he's not really old, so... Okay. The I'm other, just trying, the, to, trying to paint the picture here. Well, the other part of that class, I was wondering, too, like, why I'm so disinterested at this point. Because, like, the stuff of reading I was, like, interested in, but, like... I don't know if it's because I'm 29... I'm well. I'm not 29 yet. I'm going to be turning 29 very, very soon. Um, but I'm almost 30. I'm in my late 20s. 
And I don't have that wide-eyed, bushy-tailed individual that I was when I first went to college years and years and years ago, where it's like, I'm going to change the system, and I'm going to have this conversation, and we're going to we're going to we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and we're going to we're going to change things. I'm just kind of like, nothing what you say is going to matter. It doesn't make a difference. And everything we're talking about here, I talk about every two weeks for two hours on this podcast. And everything sucks. And yes. fuck you. Yeah. So I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it. You're you're nothing you say is going to matter. Doesn't matter. Trump's going to be president for the next 3 years. It doesn't matter what you say. There's a very good chance he'll be reelected for a second term because that's what it generally happens. Nothing matters. I don't know if I'm just too cynical for the class is what it is. Yeah, oh, man, we need a drink now. <clears throat> yes. So that's That's it. I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna try something. Ready? Well, I'm sorry. I <laughs> Adam talks about school. That's gonna be our new segment. Okay. Like when you talk about school, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> try. I'm fine it. with that. I'm fine with that. <laughs> Adam talks about school. <laughs> okay. That's, that's gonna be a thing now. Okay. All right. That's fine. Cause I'm gonna be talking about school a lot. Hey, beer of the show. Let's do it. Brisk of the show. Beer of the show. And I'm second week in the row that we have a beer from the Southern Tier Brewing Company, uh, Lakewood, New York. This one is quite a uniquey. It is. It, it actually is, too. I'm, I, I'm hoping to capture that wow factor with you. Don't say anything yet. Don't say anything yet. No spoilers, but I, I we are drinking... The Cinnamon Roll Imperial Ale from the Southern Tier Brewing Company. This is a beer that allegedly tastes like a cinnamon roll. Adam, do you like cinnamon rolls? I do. Uh, who doesn't? Let's be honest. If you don't like cinnamon rolls, I don't trust your You're judgment. You're un You're un-American. I don't trust point. your judgment if you dislike cinnamon rolls. Cinnabon. Cinnamonster. <clears throat> Come on. Fucking great. I love cinnamon rolls. So I figured... I think I'll give this cinnamon roll beer a whack. This is like, this is like really, really hardcore cinnamon right now because you gave me a cinnamon roll before we had this beer. So. That's because I'm like, I'm fucking drinking cinnamon roll beer. I want to eat an actual cinnamon roll while I drink my cinnamon roll beer. It's, like, it, it's it, almost too much. I, I almost created a paradox. Like that's how much, there was like <laughs> too much cinnamon. No, you almost, I almost broke the space-time continuum. You almost created a heart attack because that's a lot of sugar right there. Hey, YOLO. <laughs> so let me know. What do you think? You go first. I like it. It's a great, great beer. This beer it's fucking is great. fucking dessert. It's like so it, good. It, is, it actually tastes like a fucking cinnamon roll. Yes, it does. It's a cinnamon roll that I'm drinking. Holy shit. Is, dare I say? Is there a wow factor? This is this is an amazing wow factor. Yes! This this beer yes! has it. It yes! has it. Dude, I could not drink a six pack of these. I oh, couldn't no. do that. Oh no, no. But if you're looking for something unique, go for the cinnamon roll imperial ale. Like this thing is this thing is really good. Like it's it's unique. It's not too hoppy for a guy like me. It's not super it's, sweet though. It's a little heavy. It kind of sits at the buttery song, but I think there's only because it was so sweet, but it's, it's, it's great novelty beer. If you're like sitting around with your guys, be like, Hey, you know, I got this, I got this cinnamon roll beer. Like, let's give it a try, you know, have one or two of these. Like it's, it's, it's a great beer. I re highly recommend it. It is 8.6 alcohol volume. That's a lot. That's that's pretty strong. For beer, yeah, that is. That's pretty strong. So, one thing that has got me very upset about it is the big... Look at the first word on top. Seasonal. Seasonal. So, unfortunately, this is a beer that Southern Tier will only make a certain time of the year. So, this is a beer that we can't always get, which is a crying shame. Because I mean, it, it makes is sense. excellent. It makes sense why, but... It's a it's a great beer. It's a great beer. I highly recommend this. Scott, what do you think of this beer? I, I mean, you've been a, drooling all over. I it, give so. it a five out of five, man. This is I've given the perfect score before, but this time, Adam, this time I mean it. Five out of five, 
perfect score, Southern Tier Cinnamon Roll Imperial Ale. They knock it out the box. They do. Go out and get a case, like, no joke. They come in four packs. Yeah. I've noticed that about a lot of seasonal beer. It only comes in four instead of six, so... Sometimes it depends on the alcohol content, but... That shouldn't matter. When we buy craft beer, sometimes they're a little bit stronger <laughs> than the typical, so... I don't know. I think it's very good. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing beer. I'm excited to drink it for the duration of the show. So, Scott. Yes, sir. Um, Something has happened recently. We... We got to talking about philosophy a little bit. Right. And it led, it led into a little bit of Trump stuff. You mean when <laughs> Adam talks about school? Exactly. I'm really trying to make that a thing. So. You're really, you're almost overselling it. Am I? You're a little, a little bit. too much? A little bit, yeah. All right, I'll tone it down. A little bit. Um, but we led into, as philosophy does, apparently leads into Trump because he's a very controversial individual. Something has happened in Ohio. A businessman has mm. been, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? Detained? Yes. Uh, I, I can't think of the word I'm looking for, but something has gone wrong. Something, something has something, gone something, awry. Yes, yeah, something has gone something awry. Something queer is afoot. Yes. Okay. And we don't, for those of you that don't know the true name, the definition of queer, go read a dictionary please, and thank you. What's going on, Scott? So, right in our neck of the woods, not too far away from us, even though we live in western Pennsylvania, where the show is being filmed, recorded, rather, <coughs> um, right across the border to our west in Youngstown, Ohio, uh, a man by the name of Amir Al-Adi Othman Um. He is a businessman. He owns several uh, convenience stores, Quick Stops, Quickie Marts. You know, he owns he several. Own a hookah bar too. Owns a hookah bar. Yeah, yeah. he owns. I think a, a Middle Eastern restaurant too. I believe he owns a couple. For those of you that couldn't tell from his name, he's a Middle Eastern gentleman. He is originally from the country of Jordan. I think yes, Jordan. So. Here's the story behind him. He is currently, and there's been lots of twists and turns for this story, but um, it was originally he was going to be deported because he is not an American citizen. He was going to be deported, but then he wasn't going to be deported. But then he was arrested. But then he was going to be let out of jail, but then he wasn't let out of jail. Instead, he was moved to a different jail, and now apparently he's is going to be let out of jail. But it, it's it's a whole thing. I, I, let me give the backstory here. Yeah, because, go ahead. Go ahead. So he's been in this country for thirty years. He's been he's been over the country, forty. Over forty, according to the it will. All, Maybe not over 40, but almost 40 years he's been okay. in this country. He has, I think, three children. Three. <clears throat> uh, one in their 20s, two in their teens. Uh, all young women. All, and he originally he immigrated to the United States from Jordan. And he settled in um, San Diego, California. And he met an American woman there. And... They got married. When you marry an American citizen, you don't yourself become a citizen, which I thought you did, but I was ill-informed on this. You get a green card. And a green card is different from your visa. Your travel visa expires after so long. Your green card, you're not a citizen, but you can stay for, for whatever. When yeah. you get married to an American citizen, you can stay. Well, he was working and living in San Diego with his wife. But then, you know, the way of the world, things happen. His wife and he started having marital problems. And they got a divorce. He moved from San Diego to Youngstown, Ohio. He had family in the area. He worked for one of his family members in a, in a convenience store. And um, that was it. Well, it was a bad breakup, I guess. His ex-wife and him had had a very bad breakup, and she was bitter. 
The woman scoring at him. Hell hath no fury. That's right. So she apparently went to ICE, which is the immigration, and told them that their marriage was a sham. They never loved each other. It wasn't a real marriage. She only married him for him to get his green card. So when they found this news out, of course, they revoked his status and everything. Meanwhile, years later, he's doing well in Youngstown. He now owns the store where he worked. He's He employs hundreds of people. He donates 300 turkeys every Thanksgiving to people in need. He's He met another woman, another American. He got remarried and had three children with her. And he, he's a great businessman, stand-up guy, never committed a crime. But when he got remarried for whatever reason, he had this black mark on his record that basically said, hey, you can't get a green card because you lied to us once already. Um, he's got some money now because he's a business owner. So he tries to go through the naturalization process to become an American citizen, which cost upwards of tens of thousands of dollars you got to go through classes and take a test but he's willing to go he's willing to go the distance to become an american citizen he's going the distance he has been here his adult life his family is here his job is here this is his home yeah this is his home he wants to do what he has to do legally to become an american citizen and he's told by immigration no you're not even allowed to do this Well, finally, the clock has run out, and they've caught up with him. They're trying to deport him. Uh, Politicians have gotten involved trying to get him to stay, and the fight is still going on. And I just think we needed to talk about this on the show because I think it is terrible. And you can blame no one else but Donald Trump. It is his fault because he has been beating the drum about illegal immigration And let me just tell you, Adam, I'll speak from my point of view. Everyone on the show who listens know how I feel about Trump and know where my political leanings are. I I make no secret of it. But let me just say, hey, I I don't, I want to be safe. I don't want people to break the law. I don't want illegal people coming into our country. I don't want rapists and drug dealers and murderers and terrorists and crazy people. I don't want them coming into our country just as much as the next person does. I mean, we already have enough of them here already. We don't need any more coming in. So I'm all for it. But this guy, Ali, we'll just call him Ali because he's got some crazy fucking name. Our boy Ali has done nothing wrong. And the contrary, he's done the exact opposite. He has done everything right. He is, he is beloved by his community. He has done everything right he has helped people in need he has contributed to society and he's being punished he's going to be deported to a country that he knows nothing about like i want to know your opinion on this on the matter i have a question why won't they let him go through the naturalization process why did they say he's not allowed to do it oh since then i forgot to bring this up this this has been years later the ex-wife the one from San Diego. She has since come back and she's gone to ICE and said, I was just mad, bro. We were really married. We did love each other, but he left me. He divorced me. He moved away. He married someone else. And I was bitter. I was mad. I lied when I said our marriage was a sham. We honestly were really married. And that's been years. It's water under the bridge. We buried the hatchet. We're friends. I don't want him deported because of something I said 30 years ago because I was angry. And I said, we don't care. And the reason they're not letting him go through naturalization is because how the process works is you have to have your visa, your green card, and then you can go through this process. He doesn't have that. So he can't begin the process. See what I'm saying? Okay. They won't even give it to him because they are going off of old data that says that he lied, which he didn't do. <laughs> okay. Um, so let me ask you this, Scott. Does the fact that he is a good contributor to the community and the fact that he 
employs a lot of people and gives a lot of people jobs and everything like that. Does that absolve what he did before coming to the country illegally? He didn't come to the country illegally. I thought he did. I thought No, he did not come to the country illegally. He came over on a visa. You come through immigration. Anybody can come <clears throat> here. Are you saying somebody from pick random country? How about France? So somebody from France says, I want to go to Walt Disney World. I hear it's great. I listen to For Your Distraction podcasts here in Paris. And I listen to Adam and Scott. And Scott talks about Disney World all the time. It sounds like a great place. I want to visit Walt Disney World. So what would this? What would our French listener have to do? He would have to get a passport. He would have to book a flight from Paris to Orlando. He would fly across the sea, hop over the pond. He'd come here, and he would go through immigration at an airport. He would give him his passport. He'd sign some paperwork. He'd have a visa. A visa is temporary. How long are you staying, Mr. FYD listener? Oh, you know, just a week. So he, I mean, he's apparently Italian now because I didn't Italian. Apparently, yes. Okay, so anyway, so he stays for the week, and um, his visa will expire at the end of the week. But no worries. Next Saturday, his flight's back to, back home. He's going to see all the sights he needs to see in a week. That's that. So our homeboy, Ollie, he did the same thing. He came over legally. What are you doing, sir? Oh, you know, I'm coming for a job. You know, I'm going to San Diego to work in a convenience store. How long will you be here for? Six months, nine months, 12 months, whatever, 18 months. However long his visa was set to have. That's that was how- that was my confusion. I thought yeah. he I thought he had come over here illegally so, initially. That's that's a lo- that's you know, that was my confusion. If he would have overstayed his visa, well then yes, he would have done something illegal. But coming over here was completely legal. While he was here on his visa legally, he met his now ex wife, <clears throat> which they got married. And when you marry an American citizen, you get a green card. And a green card is, you're not a citizen, hey, but you can stay for an even longer extended period of time. We're not going to break up a family. You yeah. Know, that's basically what it says. That was, that was just my initial mm-hmm. confusion originally. So the fault the fault goes with the ex-wife. That's where the fault goes. The, the ex-wife is the one that started this. Yeah, and she's taken the she's, fault for it. She has admitted her she was wrong. But that doesn't matter at that point. She, she fucked up because she was bitter about the original divorce and she was bitter about the fact that this man moved on and married somebody else, she went to immigration and basically lied, essentially. The entire situation's fucked up, obviously. It's fucked up that this this man, this person who's given more than he's probably received to the community, he's, he's given so much, he is charitable, he gives jobs... All this kind of shit. It's fucked up that he's going through the situation. I can't blame ICE, though. And here's why. At this point, after her, after his ex-wife started this train, started started this whole thing where it's like, oh, no, we lied about the whole thing. Like, he's, we never loved each other. It was a sham marriage. Immigration's got no idea what the fuck's going on. Think about how many people these... I, immigration has to deal with every day. How many how many of these stories they hear every day? How many of these stories they have to investigate? I think I don't think immigration I see itself as being like Trumpy, I guess is the verb we're gonna use. Trumpy. Yes. I don't think they're being really or the adjective that we're gonna use. They're not being Trumpy about it. They're not like being initially racist about it. I think it's more the fact that they don't know what the fuck is going on anymore. I think it's a situation where it's like, okay, we were told one thing, and now we're being told another thing, and then we're being told another thing. We don't know what the fuck is going on. So it's it's the whole reason why it's like, at one point, he's in jail, and at the other point, he's out of jail, and now he's going to be deported, and now he's not being deported. Like, I just, I don't think ICE knows what the fuck is going on. They're, they, they, it defaults falls squarely on the ex-wife. The ex-wife, 100%, that's her fault. The fault is squarely on her shoulders because she was really bitter about things and she decided to lie to immigration. Immigration's I'm not saying immigration is not fallible and I'm not saying that there aren't corrupt people in immigration, but like immigration, they, they got a lot of shit they're dealing with. And they've got they hear a lot of stories every single day. 
Like, I don't think the fault can be squarely on them for, they're not, maybe they're not dealing with the situation perfectly, but they're, tr- I think a lot of them are trying to deal with it the way they best think they can, because they don't know what the fuck is going on. All right. Here's my opinion. Um, <clears throat> because I partially agree with you, but not, not a hundred percent. I do think that the ex-wife is to blame. There's no question about that. She has said it is she has admitted fault. She is trying to atone for her mistakes. So it is what it is as far as the ex-wife goes. But um as far as Ice not being to blame, they absolutely are. And I'm not blaming the enforcement officers individually. They're just doing a job. They're just everyday Joes like you and me that have rules to follow, orders to follow. They're just doing what they need to do. I don't blame them individually. I blame the government agents, the immigration government agency. They need to have a contingency plan here. They need to figure that the fuck out. Because believe me when I say there are plenty, plenty of illegal aliens in this country that are criminals, that are do that are selling drugs, that are robbing people that are hurting people raping people killing people and guess what they need to fucking go yes ice find these illegal criminals and throw them the fuck out of our country but people like ollie and the dreamers and all of these other people who are here maybe have a little bit of a legality issue of how they got here and why they're here who if they have not committed any crimes if they're good people just trying to provide for themselves and their family, then why the fuck do we need to worry about them? Well, the thing you have to remember is they weren't as far, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as from what I understand from what you told me, they weren't chasing after him like this no, they until weren't. the they ex-wife weren't. said something. No, no, no. The ex-wife said originally a long time ago, what has happened is Donald Trump. And Donald Trump's enforcement of this has stepped up to a whole when new level. When did the ex-wife first say that their marriage was a sham? When, um, when did she first say? Shortly after he left her. Which was when? Moved to Youngstown 30, 40 years ago. Okay, and then when did this whole thing start up with the uh, immigration and him getting thrown into prison? Within the past year. Okay. Like within the past six months, maybe. And a lot of that is due to policy changes from our government from the top down. So that you can't blame Obama. Ice. Obama. You can't blame ICE for that because President Obama did not enforce some of the the rules on the books. Should he have changed them for the better? Yeah, he should have. But I don't think he ever foresaw or dreamed of what was going <laughs> to be his predecessor or his his successor. Excuse me. Like that's. Uh, Trump has taken it upon himself to beat the drum against illegal immigration at every every turn of the road. And because of that, he has taken a hard line. He's put his foot down against anybody. He's throwing college students out that were born in Mexico. And parents, sure, their parents broke the law by bringing them over here as an infant. But these people have lived in their country their entire 20 years plus have never known another country, but technically they weren't born here. But and their I'm, parents but my point is, they're being thrown out too. My point is, can you blame ICE for that? Can you blame ICE for that? Yeah. It's like, well, because yeah. here's the thing. What you're saying is like, they're doing this because Donald Trump is cracking down on policy. Like, can you blame the employee for their boss wanting to crack down on things and them having to follow the rules? Well, I said I don't, well, bl- like, I don't blame the officers individually. But, but what I'm... But, so you you can't blame ICE because ICE is not is not ICE the people that are working at at ICE is not ICE the people that are working at this immigration is not like they have to follow the policies and if their boss at ICE says oh tr- oh you know President Obama is not really cracking down too much so we can be a little lenient or if their boss says oh Trump is really coming after us we got to be strict as shit so what you're saying not, is it's it's not ICE it comes from the higher ups okay so what you're saying is Trump is to blame for this <laughs> yes Trump yes that's what I'm saying okay I don't disagree I can't with you there. I can't I can't blame ICE it's like to me to me it's like. You work at you you manage uh uh this place called Cravings. You're you you are assistant manager there, correct? Right. 
Okay. Um, it be, it would be like your direct higher up saying something along like for the longest time, if somebody cut, let's assume for the longest time, this does not happen. Let's assume for the longest time, somebody comes up, gets an ice cream cone. You know, you're happen to be at the register at the time. You're like, Oh, how much is, how much is a cone Scott? For just oh, what kind of cone? Just, just could, could you work with three me? Three bucks. Three bucks. Thank you very much. Three bucks. Let's say somebody has $2 and 90 cents. Let's just say somebody's a dime short. You know, you know your boss doesn't really care that much. Every now and then you can be like, don't worry about it. You know, I'll, I'll cover the dime. You know, all of a sudden your boss starts cracking down. Like, no, we need those dimes. We need those nickels. Now you can't make those leniencies anymore. Well, you know, that's that's your higher up telling you. So that therefore, that's ISIS higher up, which President Trump, the president of the United States, c- cracking down, saying, no, we need those nickels and dimes. We need that I gotta, shit. I got to... I got to keep my drawer even, Adam. If that were to happen tomorrow at work, you know what I would do? I would take a dime out of my own money and put it in for that person. That's, that's fine. That's, that's what I would do at work. It's, it's fine. It's just mm-hmm. a random comparison I made. Right. Okay. That's, you understand what I'm saying? So the drawer is so, still on. So the, yeah. So, so that's, that's what I'm saying. It's not necessarily ICE's fault. They got to follow the rules. They got to, you know, they're like ICE is the people working at there. Like they have to follow the rules, and if they don't follow the rules, they're gonna get kicked out, and they're, Trump's gonna bring some people in that will follow the rules and do that kind of shit. I, well, so there's got to be. I mean, Trump does a lot of things. I mean, we know how much he works on tweets and his golf at Mar-a-Lago, and you know other things he does. McDonald's. He's cheeseburgers not gonna for micromanage every government agency. <laughs> He's not going to do that. He's not going to be on the phone with the director but of ICE. But if it's your ass on the line, are you willing to gamble that? Are you willing to take that gamble? If yeah, your ass is, yes, if your ass is, I am. If your ass the right is on the line, do. if your ass is on the line mm-hmm. and you got to look at your kids and you got you have two kids and a wife that you got to provide for and if you don't have a job, these kids are going to go hungry. Are you going to be thinking about are you going to be thinking about this one guy or are you going to be thinking about your family? A lot of these people got to think about their family. They got kids. Like you're lucky in the fact that you have two incomes in this house. Your your, your wife admittedly provides probably the most amount of income in this house. Uh, versus you, but imagine, I got a sugar mama. <laughs> but imagine you are the primary caregiver. You are the only income in the house, and you have to feed your wife and kids. Like you, you gotta, you gotta think about home. Like it's great to be a good person, but you gotta think about home too. It's also important what your children think about you. Maybe more important. And if you're, it, but if your kids if starve you to the death, right they're not thing. gonna be thinking about anything. It's it's about doing the right thing, Adam. It's a di- hey, we just have a different different <laughs> but who idea. Decides, of it. But who decides who's right? We know we know we assume this guy. We I've never met him before, but we assume, and he's probably more to the truth. A good man. He's pe- as far as we know, he provides for the community. He does all this stuff. But who dictates what's good and what's bad? Get like society, man. Society. Think about it. So well, who if dictates you, if, at this job that, okay, this is a good person. He needs to you know, stay here. Does good just simply mean providing for your family? There should be a supervisor. There should be a direct supervisor. There should be a director. And he should be able to say, hey, I'm not fucking going after this good guy. There's plenty of people that we need to find and kick the fuck out of this country. Let's concentrate all of our efforts on finding those assholes. Let's put all of our <coughs> everything we have into finding them. Let's not worry about Ali, who gives turkey to the homeless pe- turkeys to the homeless people <coughs> and employs 500 people in the greater Youngstown area. Let's not worry about him right now. Maybe down the road, if if he knocks off a bank, then we'll say, "Aha!" And if you you're didn't... that, and if you're that supervisor who was in charge of the organization at the time when his wife came forward and said, "Oh, this was a sham marriage. He's not legally allowed to be in this country, and that gets out because you let because you let it go. No matter what the end result was, if somehow that gets out, that becomes also public knowledge too, and that it becomes you think a, he's the only that one? becomes. But what I'm saying is that becomes a scandal too, and if that becomes public knowledge and it becomes scandal, who is in the public eye the most? Donald Trump. He will get a hold of that information, and he's not going to care. He, but here's the thing. He's not going to micromanage to the point where he's going to look at paperwork and he's going to look at things. All he's going to say is, fire that guy and get somebody else in there, and he's going to go about his business. He's going to get fired. They're going to get somebody else in there. That man loses his job because he did not 
follow the rules to which is being dictated to him. Well, I think we do agree on one thing, and it's fuck Donald Trump. But other than that, the director, no. Uh, Trump's not going to do that. Really, he fired the fucking FBI director. He fired the he fired the FBI director. He doesn't he like he doesn't nickel and dime and manage the CIA and the FBI to a certain extent, but he definitely fired the FBI director because he didn't do the thing that Trump said he wanted them to do. For something like this, I completely disagree. You, I don't. Th- yeah, no. I I for completely disagree that, with that. It, he would. It's fucking. It's minnows <coughs> for Trump. He doesn't give a shit about this. He's thinking bigger picture. That's why. I, that's why I said if something was brought to his attention like this, he wouldn't sit there and look through paperwork. He would just simply say, fire that guy, get another guy, and move about his business because that he wouldn't care. He wouldn't care about, all about whether or not. It, it, this is the kind. Of, this is Donald Trump's America that we live in, and it's all about that. It's about being scared. And people are scared. The director, exactly. the director is scared. We don't need that. And if it's the direct, time to be a good fucking the direct, person. And Adam. if the director was not scared of Donald Trump and he was not scared about losing a job and he did fight, fight against the system, the system would fuck him over because who is the system right now? Donald Trump is the well, system. Well, Ali deserves to stay and fuck Donald Trump. And that's all I have to say about that. Yes, Ali, Ali sounds like a very good person, but I can't blame... Ice, though. I can't blame them for doing their job. I do. A lot of them have and families. And fuck Ice. So I was watching a movie the other day, Adam. It got me thinking. Um, let me rewind a little bit. You familiar with the, the movie My Cousin Vinny? I love it. Starring love Joe it. Pesci and Marisa Tomei. I love that movie. Great, great movie. So one thing that always struck me as, as odd... Joe Pesci and Marisa Tomei are a couple in the film. And they, he seems quite a bit older than her. Do you not realize that? I guess, yeah. I guess, yeah. He always struck me as being so much older. And I was reading things about it, and um, the writers and directors, they said, yeah, you know, we realized that there was an age difference between Joe Pesci and Marisa Tomei. 21 years, 22 years, something like that. But they were just both perfect for those roles. So they tried to make her look older and they tried to make him look younger. But even though you watch that film, you can tell there's there's a significant age difference between the, tr- the two. That's fine. And I've heard people, I've read Reddits where people talk about the age difference. It's a common known fact out there. But back to the movie that I just recently watched. And it's my number two, two or three, my... Top five favorite films it's up of all there, time. Up there. This is the movie Jurassic Park. It was on TV the other day. I left it on. It came right on the good parts. Watched them. Oh, I loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. And I was looking at it. And, you know, Dr. Alan Grant, played by Sam Neill, and uh, Dr. What's her name? Ellie Sadler. Yeah, I think, I think that, yeah. Uh, Laura Dern plays her. And I was watching it, and I'm like, you know what? This looks like there's an... Laura Dern looks so young in it. And I've seen like interviews with Sam Neill lately, and he's pretty damn old. So I'm like, I wonder what the difference is. So I looked up the age difference, Adam, and I was shocked to see there was 20 years age difference there. L- Sam Neill is 20 years Laura Dern Sr. And you don't hear anything about that. That's almost just a year or two different than Joe Pesci and Marisa Tomei. And I I wanted to know what you thought about that. Um, me personally, I don't care that much. You don't care? No. I mean, it's it's definitely weird, but I mean, I think of it this way. Actually, I don't think of it, I don't I don't really know how I think about it because it's like are you try, are you implying that Hollywood wants beautiful women to play young, beautiful women to play certain parts and they don't care about the age of the guy. Is that what you're implying? That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. That's, that's Hollywood. That's Hollywood. Last episode, we talked a lot about how, you know, Hollywood always wants to hire the beautiful people. And we briefly talked about it when we talked about the James Franco sexual harassment stuff. Hollywood is all about hiring the Good-looking women, beautiful people, like they probably most movies look 
more at looks than they do about whether or not somebody's good for the role. I mean, look at the Transformer series. Megan Fox plays a role in there. Megan Fox is probably one of the worst actresses, in my opinion, ever. And how many how much money is ever. she raking? How much money ever. is she you heard raking it here. in? Ever. Transformers movies, she was playing in Ninja Turtles. She's real sexy. She's though. she's all oh, she's extremely she's really easy on the eyes. That's what they need. They need they want because when you it's very sexist to say this, but in both those movies you mentioned, Joe Pesci is debatably the lead character, Vinny, my cousin Vinny, and He's Marissa Tomei is the supporting character. Mm-hmm. So it's not as big of a deal whether you know you need a you know it's Joe let's be honest, Joe Pesci is not the best looking guy around. You know, he's he's talented. A, he's talented. He's a decent looking guy, but he's short. You know, he's got a little a little pudge on him and stuff like that. He's got like a little bit of a belly. So he's not the best looking guy. He's so great need, and good fellas. So you need yeah, so you need some eye candy, you know? I'm sure he was an okay looking guy when he was running around with Frankie Valley back in the day. But yeah. Yeah, you're right. But he's but he, so you need some eye candy. Uh you don't really need that so much in Jurassic Park, but it could have been a you know, who is best for the role kind of thing, because Laura Dern is debatably not a sex symbol in that movie. It's not like she's... Oh, I think she's cute. No, she. I'm not saying she's not good looking, but like, pink if you think about... she got going on. If you think about Marissa Tomei and My Cousin Vinny, she had a lot of... She had a lot, like, a lot of sleek dresses and things like that, and she looked really good, and she looked like she had a lot of makeup on. Laura Dern, she looked like a scientist. She looked like, you know, she was an archaeologist, like, just there for the science and stuff like that, and so does Sam Neill, so that might have been a... Just, you know, who was best for the role kind of thing. Like, she's obviously a very beautiful woman, but she wasn't like, I could see it if she was wearing like, you know, short shorts or like a short skirt and she had a lot of like makeup on and her hair was done in every scene. But if you want, re- you, you saw the movie again, she had like a lot of messy hair at scene. She looked like just no, a, she's running from fucking Velociraptors exactly. she at lo- But she looked like it. That's my point. She <laughs> well, looked, she's not worried about how her hair looks when she's being chased by a fucking Velociraptor. Well, think about how many action scenes we see in movies today where it's like. You know, you you look at what the person, the actor, actress looks like when they get done with it. Like, look at them; their hair is still fucking cropped, and they're still like styled. Looks like they freshly gelled. Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, do you think in either one of these movies, Jurassic Park, My Cousin Vinny, the lead female role couldn't have been played by a Meryl Streep or a Barbara Streisand, somebody like that, a, an iconic female actress? She would they would have killed those roles. They would have been great at it. It, I mean, yeah, it wouldn't have been believable as in the sense of like a relationship wise, but yeah. Why not? I don't know. I mean, sure, it would have been. They would have been closer to the age. I mean, you got to think both these films came out in the 90s. Yeah. Early 90s. So they're. I mean, why couldn't we have a younger guy? Like, why, why do we got to. Why do we gotta get rid of? Why do we gotta get rid of the female actor actress, huh, Scott? Why can't we keep the female actors and have a younger guy, huh? Why can't we do that? I just love both of those films. They're, they're great and, movies, yes. And just just recently rewatched it and noticed the age difference there. I mean, it's not that big of a deal to me. The the movies still hold up regardless. <laughs> it was just the first time and in, in, in the umpteen times that I've watched Jurassic Park that I actually noticed the difference. And maybe it's because I'm older and I, I have an eye for it now because. You know, it is when what it comes, it is. when it, like I said, when it comes to my kinds of any, I imagine nothing against Marissa Tomei. I think they were just looking for eye candy to counteract the Joe Pesci. So she was great in it, but I think they were kind of looking for eye candy. When it comes to Jurassic Park, I don't think they were really looking for eye candy because the eye candy was the fucking dinosaurs. That's the like, eye candy. That's like what that, we wanted to see. That was the eye candy. Like that. That was what was amazing about that movie. Like. The just, we want was, the T Rex inno- to eat the guy off of the toilet. It was, That's what we want to see. But it was innovative. It was an innovative movie when it comes to that. So I don't like, for example, me even as a fucking pubescent individual when I watched that movie, I didn't look at Laura Dern and be like, I, I didn't have fantasies about Laura Dern and sit there and say like, never. Oh, I like, no, because I was <laughs> because when I was watching the movie, I'm like, oh my god, look at the fucking dinosaurs! Well, this looks amazing. Me, you but no, should. but when I was watching my cousin Vinny, I looked at her and we were like, oh, she's a fucking good looking woman. Yeah, hell yeah. So Newman from candy. Seinfeld should have been nominated for an Oscar. 
Really? What a great role. I mean, I think he's a supporting character, so. Still. I'm extremely proud of you for something, Scott. Yeah, you are, huh? You've been uh you've been you've been taking my advice yep. on some shows. You've been taking a little bit of advice. So I got into a show hole, Adam. I was uh I finished some shows I was watching and It's like an asshole, but not as dirty. It's like an asshole, but not. <laughs> so I uh, <laughs> So I was uh debating on what to start and I, I felt like, you know, if I'm gonna get in I'm going to dive in head first. I'm going to go all out for this. And it's a show, or I guess I suppose a series of shows that you've been trying to get me to watch for a long time. And I looked around on the internet and I found a, a good website of a fanboy that, that explained how I should watch it. And Adam, I started watching the DC CW universe. It's about time you... those of you who are unfamiliar with them um what is it you probably know better than me arrow arrow flash, flash supergirl and um legends of tomorrow, legends of tomorrow. Yeah, those are the four right now right yes they're um black lightning is joining the fray i don't oh, know if they're sweet Jesus. i don't know i don't know if it's joining the actual cw universe but i know i saw an advertisement for black lightning on the cw so i imagine He'll be involved somewhere in there, too. Jesus so. H. Christ, now i got more to watch. <laughs> yeah. So at any rate, I, I this website said, hey, there's a way to watch it. You start with Arrow, and you watch all of season one of Arrow, and you watch episode one through seven <laughs> of season two, and then you stop and start The Flash, and it carries on from there. Uh, you watch... You go back and forth between the Flash and Arrow. Here, let me pull it up here. I Is it on Gizmo Gizmodo? I believe it was. Because on the one I'm seeing right here, it says Seasons 1 and 2 of Arrow, but I don't think that's true. So, because I could have sworn Season 1 of Arrow had had it's, Barry Allen. It, but... it, says, it says Seasons 1 and 2. And then I was wrong. It's, you watch Arrow Season 1 and Season 2. Then you go to season three, and you do episodes one through seven. It's After based... that, then you do Flash, season one, episodes one through eight. It says episode eight begins the first Arrow crossover. Then after that, you watch the rest of Arrow. It's a bu- it's convoluted, basically. It's then very... the rest of Flash, and you go... See, I'm having trouble. I, I was hoping that I was going to get into Flash this next season. I'm almost done. With season one of Arrow. I have a couple, like two more episodes left, and I finished season one. And I thought I was only going to have to go through a couple episodes before I started The Flash. I'm losing interest on Arrow. I'm losing interest fast. I don't, I don't, well, that Arrow is the slog. Arrow is the slog one. That is the one, it's really, it's really good until it's not, and then it gets good again, and then it's not. It's, it's a slog fest, that, that show. Flash is, Flash is where it's at. That's that's the show where it's at. Uh, Supergirl, it's, it's all right. It's okay. It's very, I I'm, and you know what this this sounds like I'm saying it's a negative and it's really not. It's very girly. It's very go- girly oriented. It seems like there's a lot more talking about relationships on that show than it seems like on another other shows. But I could be wrong. I don't know. But uh, it's still not a bad. Sh- it's not a horrible show. And then we've got Legends of Tomorrow, which is entertaining, entertaining show. But you really can't watch that show until you watch all these other ones. So Flash is where it's at, though. See, it, it makes sense that you would go the first two seasons. Well, I guess because like Arrow's one started all, so they need to establish it. And then they introduce. I thought it was season two that Barry Allen got introduced, but... Apparently it's not till season three. Could have been wrong. Well, he might get introduced in season two, but they might not do the crossover till season three. Well, I I don't want to spoil it for you, but when he gets introduced, basically is when the Flash starts. Kind of, sort of, yeah. Okay. Well, I, there's a couple things I want to bring up. Okay. See, like 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 I said, listeners and people are like, "Oh, I'm fucking watched all that shit." Well, eat a dick. 
I've only watched season one of Arrow, so give me a break. And what I've noticed, a couple things that, that make me angry and not so angry. The first thing is, everybody who fucking lives in uh, Sterling City, what's it called? Star City. Star, no, Star City. Central City? Which Central City is... Flash. Hold on, let me... I'll, I'll look Sterling. it up. I'll look Regardless, it up. Regardless, the town... I get them all mixed up. The town... Everybody is fucking beautiful. Everybody is damn gorgeous. Guys, girls, no homo, everybody. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's just stupid. Yeah, that's that's one of the criticisms. Um, it's Star City. It is Star City. Star City. Well, they call it... It's Starling, but they call it... It's Starling tempor- City. It was yes. temporary... I'm 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 not looking at like the CW universe. I'm looking at just like a generic DC thing. Uh-huh. It was temporarily renamed Starling, but it's actually just Star City. It's basically what it is. I think they call it Starling City in it might the, be. in this show. I know Central City is the Flash. Okay, Central. They, the they mentioned Central City a lot. Yeah, and I think they mentioned Gotham and Metropolis because it's all the same DC universe. Yeah. but at, at, at any rate. That's that, beautiful. That's the criticism for the CW shows. That's not just. I don't think it's just the Arrowverse. I think it's like Riverdale. Apparently, like I've never watched any of those shows, but Archie and Jughead. Yeah, apparently everybody's fucking sexy in that show too. Like no way. Apparently, it should just be Betty and Veronica. I mean, let's 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 call a spade a spade. I've, Betty and Veronica were always fucking DTF, and they were really really good looking. I for never, a for a comic book i never ever had any desire to watch riverdale because i knew it was about archie and stuff like that i was like ah who gives a shit about that fucking everyone archie and chug apparently don't be a hater apparently it's a great show from what i'm understanding apparently it's a really good fucking show and i'm like i still don't want to watch it but all right i may give it a whirl but yeah that's like the criticism like cw always for whatever reason hires the beautiful people to be in their shows would you, uh, Betty or Veronica? I don't read Archie. I don't. I don't know. I don't know which one is the. I don't know what they look person. like on the Riverdale. Anyway, it's irrelevant. But uh, man, I have to watch Riverdale now. How, does that tie in? Is it tie into the DC universe? I mean, it's a comic book. I mean, who, the fuck not? who knows? Who knows? Well, anyway, so yeah, he is. Um, so far, I've inter- been introduced his ex girlfriend, Dime Piece, his new girlfriend, who's like a cop, gorgeous. Um, the nerdy blonde chick who helps him on the computer, smoking hot. Oh, his yeah. little fucking sister. Damn. Oh, yeah. Everybody's. All these chicks are good. And fucking him, Oliver. I mean, he's a fucking Abercrombie model, for Christ's sake. He's always got his shirt off doing pull-ups. Guy does more pull-ups than anybody I've ever met in my life. You gotta stay fit. You gotta fight crime. You gotta stay fit, man. He fucking takes his shit. Just, just, good God. They're all, everybody is freaking beautiful. So, the next part is is the legal sense. His ex-girlfriend, who's one of the characters, one of the main characters in the show, She's like an attorney and apparently has no fucking sense of how law works. Zero. Zilch. I've never passed the bar exam, but I have friends who have and I got I've watched enough I've watched enough uh Law and Order. I watched enough Dick Wolf stuff that I've seen. I know how it works. <laughs> and it doesn't work the way like he fucking puts a bow and arrow through somebody's shoulder and aims another one at his face and said, "I want you to tell everybody that you're the fucking Criminal. He's like, fine, I'll do it. No, that's not how confessions work. If you put an arrow through somebody's body, they're going to tell you that they're the king, queen of England. It does not work that way. That that would get thrown out in a court so fast his head would spin. But they do it like every fucking time. I'll get him to confess. Yeah, you fucking will, because you're going to chop his balls off and feed it to him. Well, it's like, all right, I watched Batman Begins recently. And uh, there is the main head gangster at the beginning of the show called Falcone. Falcone, yeah. <laughs> and 
Batman, when his first outing in the bat suit, goes to the docks to stop this drug deal that, or to stop this drug shipment that's going down or whatever. And Falcone's there, and they arrest Falcone based on the fact that he was at the scene of the crime, but he was knocked out on a spotlight with like little frills hung on his sleeve, so it looked like a bat when it uh, was shown up in the spotlight. I mean, how legal is that? Because I mean, they don't know that Falcone was, you know part of this deal or whatever they they don't know what's going on it could have been you know like he could claim that you know he was you know soliciting to being there kidnapped or whatever so that wouldn't have probably held up either and how stupid is his family like oliver's family the queens i don't know what you mean by that they're so stupid his his mom and his sister they're so dumb like like they just Oh yeah, he was on a fucking island forever, but now he's home and he's doing weird things like running away. Like, what do they think he's doing? Like, he like he keeps getting like in a motorcycle accident every other weekend. Like, he's always in the fucking hospital. He's always got more wounds on him. They don't ask these. To, they're terrible family. They're such god awful people. Like, I, I at this point, I'm like, Matt, maybe my son needs some help. Maybe I should seek out professional help for him because he just keeps running away all the time and he comes back fucking almost dead. Like, I mean, (laughs) yes, it's true. That's that's like these are all fall points. I mean, it's 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 like a comic book. It's like it's it's comic book thrown at the screen. You know, that's that's what these shows are. They're comic books thrown at the screen. And I understand it's not real, but yeah, come on, you can try a little bit harder. I mean, harder. I mean, the man was on a deserted island, assumingly living by himself for how many years? You gotta expect some quirkiness, you know? It's the castaway effect. It's the castaway effect. You gotta expect a little quirkiness and things like that. Tom Hanks even had Wilson. Yeah. Wilson! My biggest criticism of Arrow was the flashback scenes. I got sick and tired of those real early on and they it's a staple of the series it's st- kind of a staple of the series a little bit he's not really on the island alone he's there with apparently all of gi joe he's got duke and snake eyes like helping him <laughs> out <laughs> and there's fucking cobra commander there too like it's nonsense he's fucking in gi joe right now on a deserted island the middle seasons aren't good they're not good i enjoyed the last couple seasons but after season one season two and three aren't really that good and then after that it gets into like some other shit that i really enjoyed so what you're telling me is what i'm watching now is good it's it okay. gets worse it gets it's it's okay is what i'm saying so it gets worse. i've never been i've never when it comes they call it the Arrowverse because arrow is the one that started this universe I've never been a big arrow guy i i was in it for the flash the flash is the flash is where it's at man like if you can make it to the Flash, like you'll you'll really start enjoying it at the Flash, I think. Cause you love you love movie comic book movies that are like comic books. They don't take themselves I like, I like they campy. don't take themselves too seriously. I like campy. You know? Yeah. And the Flash is kind of like that. Like obviously it's a TV show and it's a drama to a certain extent, so it has to have some serious moments. But it's it's kind of a comic book thrown at the screen. That's what it is. You you I think you would love the Flash. Honestly. So, so let's talk about something that the, the heroes in the DC universe. You've got Batman and you've got Arrow that are like the same fucking person. Okay. Pretty They're much. both like spoiled rich billionaire kids that go away and learn fucking martial arts and have all these billions of dollars to buy these cool toys. They come back to their home city to find it's gone to shit. So they fight crime. But they don't have any superpowers. Just yeah. they're good at fighting people and they have lots of money. So Arrow and Batman are like the same fucking person. Kind of. They have zero powers. Zero. Yeah. Okay, I respect that. But then you've got Flash, Supergirl, Superman. I would argue that those three especially, they're, they're fucking invincible. Like, they're too strong. They're <laughs> overpowered. Like, like so, how well, can any... CW answers the Supergirl and Superman question. I will spoil this for you because it's not really a spoiler, but it kind of is a spoiler. Supergirl does not exist in the same universe as Arrow. It doesn't. They exist in different dimensions. Oh. So therefore, oh, 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 so oh. therefore, Superman and Supergirl do not exist in the same universe as Arrow and Flash and stuff. 
They but exist they, in but different. They cross over. They, they cross. They cross over. There's a reason for that. I'm not going to tell you what that is. There's a reason for it. But what I'm saying is. The reason why, like, they answered the Superman question real early, where it's like, if all this shit is going on, why isn't Superman doing anything? It's because they don't exist in the same universe. They exist in two different dimensions. That's that's a classic cop-out that comic books like to do a lot. That's DC does it all the time. Alternative dimension, resurrection, and time travel. But you love that about comic books, though. I do. I do. But those are the three go-tos. Yeah. Time travel, resurrection, alternative dimension. Those three things, you have, you have a crate, you run to a dead end, oh, well, let's just take it this way. It's comic books, they all do that. I'm just saying, make it to Flash. Make it to Flash. If you can power through to Flash, Flash is where it's at, man. I After I watch season one of Flash, I don't give a shit about Arrow. I barely give a shit about the other stuff. I love Flash because it's really comic booky and, you know... Grant Grant Gustin, the guy that plays Barry Allen, he's like the Flash to me. Like I wish he would have been. I wish they would have cast him in the fucking Justice League movie to be Flash. I feel like the Flash is too powerful. He can't be beat. He can't be fucking beat. Well, you would be wrong. He can't. No, he's he is fucking invincible, man. All he has to do is like run real fast and like like punch somebody. And he's going to knock them out of their fucking skin. Well, the thing like, is, like, he can, fu- like, fucking bend time, dude. There's no way a villain is defeating him unless you're a villain. Unless Superman is your villain. Because then he can do the same fucking shit as you. I mean, he doesn't have super strength. The Flash doesn't. Superman No, does. he doesn't. That's what I'm saying. Flash doesn't oh. have super strength. No, but he, All he, he does. Is- he basically, no, he basically does. When you're able to punch somebody at the rate of speed that he can move. You could punch through their torso. But Flash is hampered by the fact he has a moral code. But if he It's the reason to... why the reverse Flash was so powerful in the comic right, books. Right. Because he didn't have a moral code. Flash has a moral code. He doesn't want to kill anybody, so therefore, that's his hindrance. You're right. He would be all-powerful if he didn't have his moral code. That's what makes a Flash a Flash. He's got a moral code. He doesn't want to kill anybody. He doesn't want to kill the criminals. Like that's what that's what that's where his weakness lies. It's the classic weakness of all superheroes. They can't be the bad guys and they can't kill. Superman doesn't want to kill. Batman doesn't want to kill except for maybe in the Batman v Superman movie. Flash doesn't want to kill. Wonder Woman doesn't want to really kill. Arrow because that's what I'm watching. He kills, but not uh, he kills as a last resort. You know that he that he does cha- kill that changes. Yeah. I'm going to tell you that right now. That changes. He he adopts the new moral code. So you mean he stops killing altogether? Don't he, tell me that. Because he because the whole thing with the uh, I just recently watched it. The thing with the huntress. Yeah. How she fucking lays waste to everybody in her way, and she's doing it. She's doing the wrong thing for the right reasons. One of those type things. And he tries to tell her, like, he has killed bad people, but he tries to not kill them first. You know what I mean? It, like, it, it, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm just saying he evolves as a character. That's what I'm going to say. Good, because he fucking needs to, because he sucks. Well, he somewhat evolves as a character. So, like I said, I, I was always in it for The Flash. Flash is where I'm at. That's, that's where I'm at with that show. The Flash have you watched leads it. All of Arrow? Maybe not the last season. I don't know. Like I said, I watch all my stuff on Netflix because I'm so a I. I'm a binge watcher. I don't like waiting a week for a new episode of things, so I hate doing that. So I, I, I wait for it to come on Netflix and I just binge watch the season. Well, I'm not giving up yet, but that's just my... I'm just telling you, yeah. muscle through to Flash. Flash is where you're at. It's a good show. Very good show, my friend. So, Scott... Yes, sir. If the people want to get a hold of us, how can they do that? Well, there's several different ways. Uh, you can shoot us an email for your distraction at gmail.com. You can find us on social media. We are on Facebook. You can search for For Your Distraction, find our page, and like us on there. Uh, we post all kinds of stuff on there relevant to the latest show and links to the newest shows. You can also find us on Twitter. Search for For Your Distraction on Twitter and follow us on there. 
If you want to send us a tweet, you can tweet us at podcast FYD. You want to listen to the show? There's several different ways you can do that. We are on SoundCloud, so you can get the free SoundCloud app on your smartphone. Search for For Your Distraction. Follow us on there. We are also on iTunes. Search for For Your Distraction and subscribe to us on there. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. You can also rate us a review. Uh, put us in the comments. Let us know what you think of the show. Um, you can also find us on Podbean under the Movie Guys podcast. The Movie Guys podcast is our sister show. There are friends over there, and they kind of run the unofficial hub for For Your Distraction. There's lots of great shows on there. Uh, that's for the Be Real podcast network that we are a happy member of. Hi, Adam. Hi, Scott. Good beer. Love this, this beer. This was a good beer. This so delicious. the beer of the show, the Cinnamon Rule Imperial Ale from the Southern Tier Brewing Company, they knocked it out the park. They cleaned house with this one. Oh, yeah. So, all right. So we'll be back next week. Definitely. Um, if you want to tell Scott whether you love the CW uh, DC universe or if you hate it, make sure to email us. We'll, we'll get it out there. We'll mention you in the show and we'll, we'll, we'll share your opinions on uh, what we talked about. Yeah. Let me know. Help me get through this. I, I like the idea of it. I want to like what you said, muscle through it, <coughs> but I feel like if I'm not enjoying it, then what's the point? It's like I said, flash is where it's at i'm gonna try to get to the flash but uh help me out listeners help me get through this also hey if you have a significant other that is 20 years older than you or 20 years younger than you let us know what you think about uh jurassic <coughs> park and uh my cousin Vinny and being represented in there